Hey guys, it's Salomon here and today we continue this small guide series to BFI. In the previous video we covered the leveling process and some tips on what you should focus on or not on your way to level 120. And in this video we instead gonna talk about once you reach level cap uh, there is a three week period where most endgame content is gated. Dungeons will go as high as mythic zero and there won't be any raids to run. This time is meant for players to level and optimize their characters during this uh, short yet crucial part of the expansion. So you just got to max level, what should you do? Well, there's a couple of things and most of them follows the same path Legion did, so let's talk about them. First important thing to get done and actively work towards is your war campaign. This is the thread that links BFA storyline. You can start working on it as we covered in the last video right when you start BFA at around 112 with each subsequent quest opening up every two levels or so, there I advised to start the campaign at only 120, mostly to save you some traveling time in between leveling, so whatever path you chose to do, you want to get it done. Why? Well, a lot of content is gated behind the war campaign, at least for your first character. Island expeditions, war fronts, war quests, unlocks, and even flying in a future patch all require you to do it. Even the new allied race, be the Magar Orcs or the Dark Iron Dwarves, require you to get the war campaign quest done and be exalted with the respective factions. With the opening of world quests comes all the contents that you already know and of course emissaries for the various factions. World quests will be available on both of yours and opposite side of faction continent due to the outposts and their rewards will be gear pieces including Azerite armor, gold, Azerite power or AP, war resources and reputation tokens on top of what's the world quest already gives, among other small rewards. Uh, war resources are used for your mission table and recruitment of troops. This is something that you are already used to, however, like I covered in the leveling video and even here at max level, the mission table is of very minor importance. Just keep those missions rolling, I recommend either going for AP or repetition tokens rewards. Uh, there's also gold, but going for for AP and reputation is the most worthwhile for now. Now, what type of content you want to focus on your character? For one, AP, so Azerite power. This is what's gonna level your heart of Azeroth necklace. This is basically your new artifact weapon. If you want a more in-depth look, I did a video about it recently to get you all caught up, but in short, your necklace will gain levels to increase its power. To level will require AP or Azeroth power. Those Levels are also tied to your Azerite armor traits, which is the new big thing about BFA's character progression, which in turn takes an extremely crucial part about your character performance. Most in-game content will award it in one form or another. Uh, world quests and emissaries is the most simple way to obtain it. Emissaries grant 400 AP always, while sometimes can grant an extra 600 to a total of 1k AP, so a pretty good chunk uh, plus reputation. Uh, that's a new thing about emissaries by the way, mouse hovering them will tell you exactly what you get on top of the AP. On my case I had a weapon rewards, AP and gold reward. Uh, world quests can also grant a nice amount of AP from 200 to 300 or a bit more uh, depending on the quest and there's quite a lot of them to do. So something that if you have the time and energy you can grind your ass on just doing every world quest that you see to get every drop of AP. For rep uh, follows the same grindy idea and remember that the whistle comes back in BF5 to make your traveling around easier without the flying in those first months. There's also some gear rewards and early on your gear might be crap, so choosing a piece or two that happened to be on a set world quest and it's an upgrade, it's worth 
to go and chase that said world quest gear scales with your item level a bit so the higher you have the higher the reward as well to some extent so you might want to hold out on them but be mindful of the world quest uptime you don't want to be missing out on free gear another interesting thing about world quests is that you do get a handful of them based on collecting as right as in the objective itself usually related to the magnifaction champions of Azeroth and doing them actually awards some extra AP so I would prioritize those world quests over others if you're really on that AP grind. And lastly, War Mode does increase the rewards from World Quests. Just be mindful of the ganks if you solo, but in the end, can grant higher amounts of AP and other rewards. World Bosses are also still here, and that's of course something that you want to get done. They drop gear with item level equal to normal old deer, so the first raid, uh, 355, so it's highly valuable in those first few weeks. And for reference, when you cap your character, item level will Will be between 280 to 300 if you're lucky. Now going back to reputations, they do have gear rewards and they are pretty decent at least in the first few days. Usually requires honored, which you should be after questing through all the zones. Exalted can give gear up to 340. That said, in order to achieve it, might take a while unless you go full on grind and by the time you get it the raid and mythic plus open possibly making that gear obsolete so take that in mind other benefits of having high reputation is that you still have that extra chest for every 10k rep extra rep that you get and then provides some more rewards at least i think it is in place Still on the topic of gear, professions can also be a good place to initially get them if you can get yourself the materials and slash or gold to buy them outright. And speaking of which, there's a new feature in BFI that is quite important for professions called the Scrapper. Much like the Obliterium Forge in Dalaran, you will be able to scrap any useless gear that you might have, crafted or otherwise, granting various crafting resources at random and the new blood of Sargeras currency. This not only will benefit your profession, but also the war fronts that I'm gonna talk about in a bit. Now moving on to island expeditions. Now the expeditions is a topic I recently covered as well, so make sure to check that out if you want a more in-depth look on this new content, but in short, they are a three-man scenario where you're gonna farm Azerite, either against a team of NPCs or actual players, and overall, this is gonna be your highest source of AP, 2,500 in fact. To get that 2k AP is gonna require some grind. On the expeditions themselves, they will give some AP from 150 to 300 per run, depending on the difficulty each time you do them, kinda like uh, random dungeons but more you do you're gonna fill this bar at the top in the expedition table interface once you reach 40k which just requires you to run expedition after expedition you're gonna get that big ap reward and then it resets every week this is something that you really really need to get done in order to level your necklace effectively they can also grant other rewards but it's mostly cosmetic warfronts is another piece of content coming in bfa which also contains pretty hefty rewards and there will be a video about it as well for a better look at them but Warfronts is kind of like a new intergrasp. It's a 20-man raid type of scenario with some RTS influences. Horde versus Alliance where each faction will fight for dominance-ish and then control it for a week, alternating between each faction. The rewards of Warfronts are quite numerous, so for one, contributing to it, think Broken Isle buildings, so they actually take place, will require crafting goods from every profession type, or gold, or even war resources. Your reward for contributing will be a nice chunk of AP and reputation. Those turn-ins are in the form of dailies, and doing all of them will get you a nice amount of AP, 500 per quest. That said, might get a little bit grindy or expensive even with the scrapper. Winning an actual Warfront or just AFKing it, am I right? Will also award a big chunk of AP and a loot box which can award the gear up to 355 item level. And you can keep on doing Warfronts for two days until the event 
timer ends. In my case, I got myself two Azrite armor pieces and a belt of the same item level. And they always seem to give gear with every run, or maybe I was just lucky. That said, the only gear that you can get from here is that tier set that you might have seen lying around and some weapons. Still, don't miss out on that free 340 or above gear. And for the remainder of the week, so when the Warfront or rather Arathi Highlands Zone are in a sort of peace state, there will also be quite a lot of quests for you to get and do on a weekly basis, granting a lot of war resources which you need to do those turn-ins later, and for things like the mission table, but also one quest containing another chest granting 340 gear, which in my case I got myself a 340 Azrite armor head slot, so not too shabby. More importantly, above all, is a world boss in a Rathi. Killing this, at least at the time of recording, drops gear up to 370 item level, although might be 355 before raiding actually opens, but that's equivalent to heroic raiding or normal if the item level is nerfed. So yeah, make sure to get that done. And lastly, let's talk dungeons. A normal modes you can do easily at max level, and you might or not need to do to reach the heroic requirement of 3-5 item level. These drops do help on top of the things stated above, but if all else fails and you really want to get on heroics, which drop gear of 3-25 item level, you can just set up a pre-made group for it. If you really don't have a guild or friends or whatnot, you can actually do it before the item level requirements stated by the game. As for mythic dungeons, drop epic 340 gear, which is quite nice considering normal rating is 355, and at around 320 you should be ready to go on some mythics. And here, if you really want to prepare your character for raiding and Mythic Plus, you want to be doing the 9 dungeons on a weekly basis, getting the highest chance at loot drops. The dungeons are quite fun, so if you have the time and energy to do them all, I highly recommend that you do them. Dungeons do grant AP per boss or doing randoms, but only at 200 or 300, so really not a lot comparing to previous content. The weekly cash from Mythic Plus can grant a nice amount, but again won't be opened at the start. As for Azrite armor, don't worry overly too much in these first three weeks or so. The best way to obtain it will be through those normal mythics as well, so again like normal gear. The Warfronts can also give Azrite armor, like I mentioned above, as do world quests, although those are quite weak in comparison, but decent when you first reach cap. After Mythic Plus and Raids actually open, however, they will come obviously from Raid Bosses, but from Mythic Plus only with the weekly cash, not on drops from the dungeon itself, so the chest at the end. And they are usually coupled with regular gear on the weekly cash, so you can get more than one item this time. And on the topic of gearing, there's just a few things I wanted to add. Well, first of all, in these first three weeks, item level will be capped at 355, both yours and gear drops. So your war forging and titan forging, which are still at play here, won't be as strong, although I have seen a 350 coming from a normal dungeon drop. Weapons do war forge and don't titan forge, and Azrite armor has that flat item level attached to it. But besides that, there aren't any surprises here. Gear works exactly as it has in the past in a pretty linear fashion. Fashion. Stats also work a little bit differently. Primary stats are far more powerful in BF aim, so intellect or agility or strength, while secondary stats like haste, mastery, crit are not as strong. Item level will be king here, it's something to keep in mind while first gearing up. All of that said, complete your war campaign to unlock a portion of the content, run your island expeditions weekly for the big AP rewards to level up your heart of Azeroth necklace and then get the better traits on Azerite armor, along with any warfront quest if you can and it's available. Remember, these are your biggest sources of AP, along with emissaries and world quests. Then do your mythic dungeons for the best gear available, along with world bosses when you you can. And yeah, 
that covers it all. If you have any questions, do leave them down in the comments, do let me know what you all think of PFA Endgame so far, do you think is the same old, same old, or is the new content like the expeditions and warfronts, plus all of that you already know can keep you entertained. As always, thank you for watching, remember to subscribe, like and hit that bell icon to get more videos like this, and check out my Patreon if you wish to support the channel. Have a fantastic day everyone, and I'll see you all next time. See ya!